Chapter 29 Jacob resumed his journey and entered the land east of Canaan. One day, Jacob came to a well in the open country where the shepherds watered their animals. Three flocks of sheep and goats were lying near the well, which had a large, heavy stone covering the opening. Whenever all the flocks gathered there, the shepherds would roll away the stone from the mouth of the well, water their sheep, and then roll the stone back over the top of the well. Jacob approached them and said, Good day, friends. Where are you from? We're from Haran, they answered. Did you happen to know Laban, a grandson of Nahor? Jacob said. We do, they replied. Jacob asked, How's he doing? He's doing well, they answered. As a matter of fact, here comes his daughter Rachel right now with her flock. Jacob said to them, Look, it's not time for the animals to gather together here. It's now the hottest hour of the day. Let's go ahead and water the sheep. Then you can go and pasture them. They replied, First we have to wait until the flocks are gathered. After that the stone needs to be rolled away from the mouth of the well. Then we'll water the animals. While they are still speaking, while they were still speaking, Rachel the shepherdess drew near to the well with her father's sheep. As soon as Jacob took one good look at Rachel, the beautiful daughter of his uncle Laban, he quickly went over to the mouth of the well and single-handedly rolled away the stone and watered all the flock of his uncle Laban. Immediately, he walked up to Rachel and kissed her. Unable to hold back his tears, Jacob wept aloud. After he composed himself, he explained to Rachel, I'm your father's nephew, your aunt Rebecca's son. Upon hearing this, Rachel ran to tell her father. When Laban heard the news that his nephew Jacob had arrived at the well, he ran to greet him. Laban hugged and kissed Jacob and welcomed him into his home. After Jacob told him the very story of all that happened, Laban said to him, Certainly, you are my own flesh and blood. Jacob stayed with him for an entire month and worked for him. Afterward, Laban said to Jacob, Just because you're my relative doesn't mean I expect you to work for nothing. Tell me, what do you want your wages to be? Now Laban had two daughters. The older was Leah and the younger was Rachel. Rachel had a lovely figure and was gorgeous, but Leah's eyes were weak. <laughs> Jacob had fallen in love with Rachel, so he had answered Laban, I will serve you for seven years for the hand of your younger daughter Rachel. Laban replied, I'd rather give her to you than to some older man. Stay and work for me. So Jacob served Laban for seven years in exchange for Rachel. But because he loved her so deeply, the seven years seemed like only ten day, only few, a few days. After the seven years, Jacob said to Laban, My time is fulfilled. Give me your daughter so that I may marry her and sleep with her. So Laban prepared a wedding feast and invited all the people of the surrounding area. That night, Laban tricked Jacob by bringing his older daughter, Leah, to Jacob's tent, and he slept with her on his wedding night. Laban assigned Zilpha to be Leah's servant. When Jacob awoke up the next morning, he was shocked to find Leah lying next to him. So he confronted Laban and said, What have you done to me? Didn't I serve you these seven years for Rachel? Why have you tricked me? Laban answered, It's not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older daughter is married. Wait until this bridal week of festivities is over. Then I'll give you Rachel. But you must serve me for another seven years. Jacob complied with Laban's request. After he completed the prescribed week of Leah's wedding feast, Laban gave his daughter Rachel to be his wife. And he slept with her. Rachel was his true love, not Leah. Laban assigned Bilhah as his daughter Rachel's servant. And Jacob remained there serving Laban for another seven years. 
When Yahweh saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel remained childless. Leah conceived, gave birth to a son, and named him Reuben, saying, Because Yahweh looked upon me with compassion in my misery, surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again, gave birth to a son, and named him Simeon, saying, Yahweh has heard that I am despised, and in his mercy he has given me a son also. Leah conceived the third time, gave birth to a son, and named him Levi, saying, This time my husband will be joined to me, because now I've given him three sons. Once again, Leah conceived and gave birth to a son, and she named him Judah, saying, This time I will praise the Lord. Then she stopped bearing children for a while.